I've been trying to get a hold of one of these for a minute. This is the Motu 828 MK3 Firewire. Now, I do have an 828 MK2, and like that, you have your two preamps just right up front. These have 53 dB of gain, 48 volt phantom power, a 20 dB pad, instrument, XLR, digitally controlled trim, two headphone jacks on this unit, one for main and one for discrete that you can program for any type of mix that you want. This one has Q-Mix, so these four nightmarish knobs of pain, more on those later in the video, allow you to control all of the internals in our standard Motu screen, our nice little bit in the middle that tells us about the device, and, you know, analog metering. On the back, internal power supply, good to see, don't have to worry about power bricks. Word clock, also good to see. And SPDIF, hardware MIDI. Now, we don't have one, we have two banks of optical for ADAT or SPDIF, and of course FireWire and a pass-through switch, foot switch, eight channels of in, eight channels of out, analog, and insert jacks for external gear and timecode option along with our main out. But how do you get this plugged into a modern system? Hmm. Well, you use one of these. I don't care which one you currently have, throw it away and buy this one. I have a couple of these, and I probably have more FireWire interfaces than you do, and this works. This has the correct Texas Instrument B Revision chipset in it. It's PCIe by one. Also supports external power. You get two 800 ports and one 400, and it is plug and play. Speaking of plug and play, we have it hooked up, so I can do my public service announcement. I had to decrypt this thing. Going right into setup, we press that. These are our standard options. Sample rate, your phone assign, main out, return, optical in, optical out, and remember that we're gonna have two banks, A and B. Word clock follows system. Okay, basic stuff, let's press it again. LCD contrast, eh, all right, fine. Let's get that balanced out, kind of again. Presets. So if you want to save different presets for this, and you can name them anything that you want. And this is the important one. Reset factory defaults. That's probably the first thing you want to do once you get one. So this is this is the new thing in the MK3 series is the Q-Mix with the FX. You get eight mixes that you can do any combination of input, output that you can come up with on the device, be it a mixture of you know analog or digital. And on top of that, we also have FX that we can play around with, which, oh, okay. Technically you can play around with if uh, you have the patience to do it. Let me show you. Let's press the mix button. That will show you that this is for input because you can apply the effects for input and output. And you have things like, um, you have levelers, limiters, compressors, EQs, reverb, there's probably some other stuff that I, I've not really played around. High pass filters and all that fun stuff. Never messed around with. And of course you can set pairs, you know, like, uh, like it's not a good example. Here we go. Analog one and two could stereo pair, or you can switch it out to, you know, two mono pairs. You get the idea there when or when you would not need to use that. But not only can you do all the effects and everything on the input, you can immediately go over to output and do separate effects on the output because inside this critter has a Xilinx Spartan FPGA powering it. it. It's got a lot of smarts. So that's neat. I think maybe it does the reverb. That was a big selling point back in the day, but this is the downside. I'm going to start up Fado Mixer with my Motu Traveler MK1. Look at this. This is how it should look. You can get all the mixes and, you know, AES, EBU, spit of ADAT, however you want to route it. This is what it looks like with a Motu MK3 of an EO. Word clock and sample rate. That's, that's really all you get. Also, mixer, it's not a better love story. Let's go down to the 828 MK3 and it will tell us to get bent. All right. So... Future people, if you're running a newer kernel 514 plus, you don't have to do any of this. But Fado drivers typically work, also drivers typically don't. However, very recently, 
very recently, um, Tack, who maintains the also Firewire stack, fixed the big problem. And did he implemented media clock recovery for the Moto interfaces and DigiDesign interfaces, which allows them to work using just the Ulsa FireWire stack. And this is big because newer kernels, you're not going to have to do anything but plug it in. But today, we're going to have to build the drivers. And on Debian, Ubuntu's, or something like that. It's going to be really close to what I'm doing on screen. You know, your build essential, DKMS, Git, and all the fun stuff. Speaking of Git, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just cloning tax Git. We're going to bounce in there, and we are going to do a simple link command. All of this is going to be in the description on the web zone. And, of course, we're going to build the uh, DKMS and install the also Firewire. And that might take a minute or two, depending on the speed of your system. But once it's done, we'll just give it a quick reboot. And there it is. We have the also drivers, therefore everything's going to work. Pulse audio, pa Pavu controller, and it just sees it as a sound card. I wouldn't suggest using it as a sound card, but in a pinch, you could. We're going to be using it with Cadence. Of course, that means we're going to be using it with Jack, and to put a fine point on it, Jack too. Again, the Fado drivers, they do work, but they're a bit squirrely compared to the also drivers, and that's going to be the ones that we're using since we just built them. We're just selecting the device and everything really works if our sample rate buffer size and your periods per bu buffer but keep that at three because firewire anything else set it to whatever your system will handle let's hit okay i'm gonna hit start and let's head over to katia eh, everything's looking good yeah. let's go to katia and that's just how I currently have it configured with uh, 22 inputs and 18 outputs. Up next, I'm going to try to generate some X runs. And the way I do that is by loading it into a real session that I use each and every week, feeding it some inputs, hitting the record, giving it 10 minutes because, you know, most people are only going to be recording around 10, 15 minutes at a time and see if I manage to generate any X runs. This time, didn't. These are using the new also drivers, and this makes me very happy to see, because it does mean in the future you will be able to plug this in, and it's just going to work. Now we're going to take a look at the round trip latency. This is letting us know how quick a signal can come out of the computer, go into the interface, come out of the interface, and get back into the computer. Gives us an idea of what our speed's going to be, and it's really important if you're doing monitoring, playing live instruments, or anything like that. Now, one of the downsides with the also drivers in their newest state, they're ever so slightly slower. They get slightly higher latency than the Fado drivers, but this is not a deal breaker. You can take a look. Everything from 44, 48, 96, 192, everything is reasonable and the best I can tell, completely stable. Hey, we're done with that. So what do we think? <clears throat> Pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. You get those two preamps, 53 dB of gain. They're nice. Digital trim on each one. You can do the plus one, minus one adjustments. No static. You never have to worry about that. Digitally controlled. Very happy to see that. 16 in, 16 out. Digital I.O. 8 ant or SPDIF. Discrete headphone jack for custom mixes. If you want to take time to mess with the system, you can get it done. That is brilliant. Insert jacks. So if you have outboard gear, if you have compressors, EQs, something like that, that you would like to plug in, it's available. Standalone operation is another big, big plus with the Motu 828MK2, the Traveler MK1, and again, with this 828MK3. You can use it as an interface, a preamp, a mixer, never have to have a computer near it. And you can control everything if you're brave enough through those four knobs on the front. On to the cons, one of the big ones, one of the big ones is no Fado mixer. That's quite unfortunate. We don't have that nice little GUI to navigate the internal routing of the system. Dang it. I was kind of hoping for just a little bit, but it just is not there. So your mixing and effects all have to be done with the front panel. You have those four knobs to play around with. It can be a nightmare just to get something set up, but it is doable. It probably took me the better part of an afternoon reading through the manual, because even in the manual, they don't address everything 
fully expecting you to never actually having to suffer through that. But again, it is Moto. Everything is there. That, there's also the 16 second startup time. That's a bit rough. That's also a con. This is not something you just cut on and do. It's going to stop some people from using it as a sound card, which is good, but you know, sitting down, getting ready to record, keep that in mind. That doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it it, it is. Go count to 16. Um, and another con is price. You're going to have to expect to pay between $250, $300 on the low end for an 828 MK3. That's going to be in good shape. You know, something that you would actually want to own. I managed to do like this one for $200 off of Guitar Center after waiting probably the better part of two years. I just locked up. One showed up and I yoinked it. Uh, you're going to run into things like the A28 MK3, MK3 series as a whole and things newer than that. They've absolutely just maintained their value compared to a lot of things because there's nothing wrong with the hardware. In a lot of cases, the hardware is better than like the cost reduced stuff that's coming out in 2021. It's just the interface. Firewire, you know, the Windows and Mac are dropping support, but hey, we're on Linux. We can take advantage of it. But people really don't want to let go of these. Now, the final con is the also drivers have just a wee, just a slag, just a smidge higher latency than the fader drivers. But that's something everyone's going to be able to live with because it's not show stopping. We're talking a couple of milliseconds of difference. And these drivers are still very new. I'm sure by once they've matured, they're going to be a lot closer. They are. And I mean, it's nothing that's going to make or break a recording. It's still within that 11 to 12 milliseconds that you can live with for live monitoring or playing instruments or anything like that. Monitoring your own voice, no problem whatsoever. But that's going to do it. Hopefully I answered your questions. I definitely answered mine. And uh, yeah. You want to see more of this? Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we do this. Do this out of pocket. We stick stuff up and try to make the information available because no one else is going to do it. Hey, and I want you to get out there and make stuff on the cheap, if at all possible, save you a few bucks. Hopefully this video helped out with that. All these people helped me make this video. So I want to thank each and every one of them. And all the people back here in a fine, upstanding cannibal wall. I don't even know if I'm going to tell you how to get on that. That that, that should remain a secret. Um, yeah, it's a studio or some stuff. But that's going to do it for this one. I'll be back next time. I might. I just might. I might wait until Colonel 514 comes out officially. And re-review one of the first Firewire interfaces I bought. Out of curiosity is my DigiDesign 003R because uh, it works now. And uh, I'm kind of curious as to just how well. Hmm. We'll find out. All right. Until next time, again, get out there. Make something awesome.